So it's been a long drive to get here, nine hours, 600 miles, and we're looking for native lanternflies here in the Chiricahua Mountains. On the east coast of the United States, there is an invasion that is currently underway. And this is by the spotted lanternfly, which is native to China. Its populations have grown very quickly, it's spreading rapidly, and it appears to be an agricultural pest. One of the host plants it really likes feeding on are grapes. This is a highly important specialty crop for California. We're very worried about the spotted lanternfly arriving in California inadvertently becoming a potential invasive insect pest that could do a lot of economic damage. So we are planning a biological control program in advance of the anticipated arrival of spotted lanternfly into California. If we are to use natural enemies to suppress populations of spotted lanternfly to lower levels, we need to understand whether those parasites that we bring from China will have an adverse and unwanted effect on the native insect fauna here in the southwestern parts of the United States. The first objective is to capture adult lanternflies at night using a black light. It's probably not really fair to say that they're being attracted by the bugs so much as it's just screwing up their navigation system. Normally we'll navigate using the moon because that's about the only thing that's visible in the dark that you can steer by to go in a straight line. But if you create an artificial moon, like a UV bulb like this, then any beetle that's flying past it is going to get confused between that and an actual moon. And what that winds up doing is it makes them basically crash into wherever you put the light. So far the trip has been extremely successful. We have captured adult lanternflies at night using the black lights. So he's right here. Sitting on that damp piece of paper. He's still moving, so he's still alive. So we're hoping that he'll go off of that paper start feeding on this bark, in the cracks of the bark. And to help with that, Francesca's peeled away a little bit of bark so it's not so thick. So you're gonna have easy access to the food conducting tubes in the tree trunk. The second objective is to cage those lanternflies onto possible native host plants. These could either be junipers or oaks. So the way they work is that we open them up and we fit them over a branch like this, seal up the end with the drawstring and we put our insects in here and the idea is that they'll feed on this plant and they'll live and we can study their biology. A major breakthrough for us was with the insecticide fogging. And as you can see in this container, who would have thought that much insect life were living on these trees behind me? We have the first nymphs for these lanternflies. These have not been seen before. And because they fell out of the trees that we were fogging with insecticide, we feel very confident that those immature stages are probably feeding on the juniper trees that we were fogging. And this is the first record we've got for the potential host plant species that some of these lanternflies may be feeding on. So that's been a real breakthrough for us. The University of California Riverside, especially the entomology department, is a world leader in biological control programs. So the Spotted Land and Fly project that we're running now is really building on the successes of a lot of other biological control programs that have been launched out of UC Riverside. Our quarantine facility, it's world class. It's one of the largest in the world. 
we didn't have that facility at UCR, there is no way we could do this work for California. And when you consider the economic benefits that come from biological control programs, the millions of dollars that natural enemies can save growers through reduced crop losses and through reduced pesticide use, that really plows back into the economy of California. So there are benefits that affect everybody in California. If you eat fruits and vegetables, nuts, you have benefited from biological control in California through programs that have reduced pesticide use on those crops.